What's going on Salt Strong Nation? Here today to do the second video of our three part series about how to catch redfish, trout, and flounder during the summertime. Today I want to talk to you all about how to catch flounder during the summertime. Flounder is, a, is an incredible fish to catch, it's an incredible fish to eat, and they're fun to target. And when you've got that pattern down, you can really catch a lot of flounder um, you know, in a certain area once you figure out where they want to be. Uh, what they want to eat. So before we talk about the tackle and what we're going to actually be throwing to catch these fish, it's it's important to dive in and talk about where these fish are. So in the winter and the colder months, these fish slide offshore and sit on some of the near shore wrecks. Uh, that some fish migrate south and then back up north. Some fish migrate out into the ocean and then then back in shore. And then in the winter time, I've caught flounder out at 15, 20 miles bottom fishing. Um, you know, if it, you drop a a, a menhaden down or a, a dead mullet on the bottom and you'll catch a flounder. I've caught on metal jigs offshore in the winter uh, when I'm not targeting flounder at all. And a lot of these fish will work their way in as it, as it warms up. And so flounder fishing near the beach on, on artificial structure or, you know, you know, real like live bottom ledges and stuff like that can be extremely productive. Uh, fishing in the ocean is a lot of fun, but it does require, you know, a larger boat and it requires uh, a GPS and a fish finder. Um, and so you, you, you have to be very precise on where you're fishing. Those fish are going to lay on little tiny pieces of structure. They're going to lay on big pieces of structure. Uh, but if you don't have that bait right there in front of them offshore, it can be tricky. So um, being accustomed to, you know, knowing where some of those near shore wrecks are, having numbers for those, but then also knowing how to spend the time and break down uh, the little pieces of structure around that, let's say, artificial reef or the little sections of live bottom or the little ledges that those flounder are hanging on. Uh, it just takes time to getting out there and, and learning how to uh, how to read that depth finder and know where those fish are. But once they get to that near shore structure in the spring, a lot of big fish will stay out there on that structure, but a lot of fish will come in through the inlets and, uh, and, and move into the marsh. And so the first place to target them as they're moving in is the jetties um, that that uh, line a lot of the, the inlets up and down the east coast. You can target those jetties um, with, with big soft plastics and anything that you can kind of drag across the bottom uh, and bounce on the bottom uh, is really productive. But flounder, as we all know, lay on the bottom. They're flat fish that, that lay and their, their way of eating is to be camouflaged on the bottom and wait for a bait fish to swim across the top of them uh, and come up and eat them. And so, so fishing something that you can keep on the bottom is important. Um, weight is, a, is, is important. You want to be able to get down to the bottom, but I really like to fish the lightest possible weight that I can where I can still have good connection with the bottom. What that does is it allows that bait to act a lot more naturally on the bottom. And when I say bait, I mean your artificial lure. Obviously, if you've got a live bait on, uh, you can drop it down on a pretty heavy jig head and you're still going to get, you know, lot, or pretty heavy uh, sinker and you're still going to get a lot of good action from that bait because it's live bait. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's swimming around on the bottom. But if you fish, you know, a small soft plastic on a really heavy jig head, it's just going to dart to the bottom like a bullet. And when you, when you pick up on it, it's going to shoot up and then dart back down to the bottom. Not that you can't catch fish like that, but we're trying to, to give the most natural presentation we can, which is just really important especially when fishing deeper water because you need heavier jig heads. So if you are fishing, you know, that deeper water and you need to fish a heavier jig head, play around with it and fish the lightest possible um, jig that you need for that condition of water, whether it's the depth or the current or, or whatnot. So um, with that being said, targeting these fish on these jetties and these inlets is, is, is key. These fish move in there, but, but just because they're, they're using them to move back to the marsh doesn't mean they're not there, you know, all summer. So you can catch big flounder in inlets and on jetties all summer long. But what I really like to do is target flounder inshore. That's one of my favorite things to do um, when it comes to flounder fishing. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to find, there's really three main ways that I fish for them. I go up into a creek where I know there's, there's a complex of creeks coming together. So if I've got two or three different creeks all draining into one area, on that falling tide, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to power pull my boat down. I'm going to spot lock my boat. I'm going to anchor it. Um, you know, cut kayak in there, stick the kayak in, in the mud and just sit there and make a cast across every little point and every little creek mouth from every angle that I can. Those flounder are going to position themselves in a way where the majority of that bait's coming through. So if your bait comes through there at the wrong angle, it might get eaten, but they're probably more likely to key on it when it's, you know, coming across at the angle that those fish are set up at to feed. And so picking apart those areas and creeks where there's a lot of drainage just coming together as that tide's falling is key. Um, the other big thing that I like to do is, is find long grass edges that have little small points and some like oyster rock around them and, and get really tight to the grass and get long cast down the grass and just drag that bait or bounce that bait back to me um, cl close to that grass edge. And as that tide drops, obviously I might go a few more feet out and a few more feet out. Um, and and that, that can be a very productive way to catch those fish as well. Uh, another thing to, to keep in mind is a flounder is a very flat fish. It does not need much water at all to, to sit in. 
And so one thing that I found when the lights lower, and I found this by pulling for redfish, I'm up on the shed in the shallows looking for redfish, you know, early in the morning or late in the evening, those flounders slide up really shallow. I mean, they'll sit in three, four, five inches of water. Um, and as that, as it gets brighter, those fish kind of slide off a little bit further, but they're just trying to put themselves right there in the, in the best place to easily grab bait. All these fish, you know, redfish, trout and flounder, all they're thinking about is where can I position myself to get the meat, get the meal I want the easiest way possible. Another thing is, is inshore structure. So if you've got docks, or you know big bridges or any type of pilings or even, a lot of times it can even just be a channel marker you know in a river or, or in the intercoastal waterway any piece of structure that that fish can hold to that's going to attract bait to it he'll do it i've caught a lot of big flounder off of just single pilings um, as well as pitching up underneath docks and working the baits back out um, and, and fishing big pieces of what i like to call like mega structure like a big uh, industrial dock or you know a massive bulkhead wall just anything that gives these fish something to to use to attract bait so they can sit there and ambush it. Uh, those are the main things I like to, the main places I like to target flounder in shore. Um, and hopefully uh, as we dive into this tackle here, y'all can apply, you know, using these different pieces of, um, or these different artificial lures in these places and you'll be able to catch more flounder this season. Um, so I'm gonna show y'all my favorite lures for fishing for flounder, both inshore and near shore as far as artificials go. So first off, it's really hard to beat. I, I throw this a lot of, you know, 90% of the time if I'm throwing a soft plastic to try to catch, you know, redfish, trout, and flounder all at the same time. It's going to be a diesel minnow, usually in the red bone color and usually rigged on a Texas eye jig by eye strike fishing. I will oftentimes change that up to just a normal redfish eye by eye strike fishing and any jig head will do. Um, I do really like these large eyes. I feel like the fish really key in on the eye profile um, and, and, and the, the color change of the, you know, the eye on the jig here. So that's, you know, my, my main reason I like that eye strike jig and it also looks good to the fisherman and that you can't complain about that, but that's, that's kind of my go-to soft plastic that I'm throwing, um, for all the species throughout the summer. Uh, if I'm, if I'm really just targeting flounder, there's two soft plastics in shore that I'll throw. And one, a lot of y'all probably know about this is the gulp shrimp. Uh, I really like the new penny color, but I'll also throw the white color. Sometimes our pinfish gets so feisty here in shore in the summertime that that white is just a little too much for them to key in on and you'll get you just get torn up by pinfish pretty quickly. Um, but the new penny shrimp is is definitely definitely a, uh, a great, great color for flounder. This is the four inch. I like the larger profiles for flounder um, and, and it, offshore I'll fish even bigger stuff and inshore I'll fish bigger stuff. But if I'm not fishing a gulp shrimp on a jig head, what I am fishing is a white fluke and I'll fish these smaller white flukes. I'll go all the way up to seven inch white flukes in short. Um, and both of these, the way that I'm retrieving them is little small bumps on the bottom, reeling the slack out with my reel, couple small bumps on the bottom, reeling my slack out with the reel, or I'm just kind of slowly dragging it and some twitches the whole time I'm retrieving it. I want that bait to be on the bottom and it's okay if it hops up a little bit, but you want to make sure that you're making contact with the bottom, you know, every, every couple, you know, either six to eight inches or a foot. If you're, you know, making larger jumps on the bottom inshore, a lot of times you're sliding it over those fish. There's so much bait along the shoreline edges, the oyster bars, the points, um, that these flounder are really waiting for that bait fish or that shrimp that's gonna really slip up and come right across their face. And so keeping that bait on the bottom, is, which is obviously where the flounder's laying, is your best way to hopefully hook more flounder while you're targeting them inshore. Um, so the white fluke, and the gulp new penny shrimp or the white new or the white gulp shrimp um, are, are my favorite soft plastics for inshore flounder fishing. Now the next thing that we need to talk about though is is near shore flounder fishing. And uh, near shore flounder fishing is a little bit different. Um, you just the the real big difference though is you just need more weight to get down there, and you can bounce that bait a little bit higher on the bottom. Um, this is the same uh, soft plastic that I prefer to fish for large bull redfish or or, or uh, redfish on you know deeper water and structure but this is the, the seven inch shad by um, Elias V Fishing, who's a YouTuber, um, makes a lot of really great soft plastic baits for, for jigging. And, and this bait does really, really well for flounder and redfish. I've been out offshore before and caught a redfish one drop on this and turned around and caught a big flounder on it. Uh, people, you know, sometimes shy away from baits this large for flounder, but a flounder can eat a very, very large bait. Um, I've caught them like this before and they've had pinfish in their mouth, other large bait fish in their mouth, um, and, and they'll still come and eat a large bait of this profile. Um, what I like to do when targeting those flounder near shore is not drop right on the structure. You're looking for those little small ledges, small little relief on your GPS. 
um, your fish finder that, that's just around the edges. Those fish want to lay around lower relief because what lower relief does is it causes the bait to sit closer to the bottom. If you've got a big ship, you know, with bait really, really high, there's not going to be as much bait close to the bottom and those flounder are going to find somewhere a little bit further off the ship or the structure where they can, you know, sit and have that bait closer to where they are. They don't have to rise up off the bottom very high to eat it. And so, you know, by applying these, these baits and fishing these areas I've talked about, it should help you catch more flounder this summer. Well guys, thanks for checking out this video. Like I said, the second video in our three part series of catching redfish, trout and flounder in the summer. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below and be sure to check out the Salt Strong Insider Club if you want to become a better fisherman and angler. Thanks. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong in wet lines today